You're listening to Graphic Novel Explorers Club Podcast, an audio book club. Thanks for checking out today's episode of Graphic Novel Explorers Club. I'm one of your favorite hosts, Francis, joined by... Uh, Your least favorite host, Dennis. (laughs) And your medium favorite host. (laughs) I'm right in the middle. I'm in that good spot. Medium rare. Yeah. (laughs) Today, we will be discussing Park Bench by Christophine Chabotet or something similar. We hope you have already read today's title because all three of us have read the book, so beware, spoilers ahead. We would love for you to share your opinion and thoughts with us. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at GN Explorers Club. Leave a comment on Facebook or email us at gnexplorersclub at gmail.com. Graphic Novel Explorers Club is available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever podcasts are available. Uh, Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Graphic Novel Explorers Club. We are diving in today. Uh, A new novel for us, a first time, actually. It is The Park Bench by Christopher Chabot. Chabote. Chabote. Mm, mm. It's French. Yeah, he's French. I can't pronounce it. It's C-H-A-B-O-U-T-E with the salant. Um. The premise, so the, the reason why this is a first for us is there's absolutely no words in this book. It's just pictures, and it's over 300 pages long. It's very thick, but again, because it's just pictures, it's actually a quick read considering it's 300 pages. And the premise is very simple. It's, it's a, really a book about community and how this community f- comes together under a park bench, which is, I'm sorry, the park bench, which is under a tree essentially. And there's really, um, well, this is a spoiler, but I have to, to spoil it, I, to get into the book. It really follows five main um, couples or characters, if you will. So at first it kind of seems random, but as you go about, um, and, you'll see the connect the connections. And even some of the characters that you think are just peripheral characters wind up having a story kind of towards the end of the book, like the businessman. Yes. And I, I looked up how to say Chabute's name. Let's see if is it Laurel? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> That's dated now. Let's hear it. <laughs> Hold on, I'm just downloading a virus. Very nice. So it was hard to find things on this author because everything I found was in French. But um, let's. I'll go ahead and dive in. So how this novel starts is it's two kids, a boy and a girl, and I don't know they're like nine or ten, and the boy is carving "I love you," um, just "I," a heart, and a "u" into the park bench onto the upper right hand corner of the bench in the wood. Um, and as he's carving the U, he somehow drops the knife and just slits his hand wide open. And there's just blood everywhere. His, his Specifically his thumb. He slices his thumb. Oh, my God. You all – I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen today. <laughs> you said his hand. Okay, but – And it I know, plays but in it later. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it's a minor fact, John. No, oh but God. at the end of the book, the injury comes into play. Right, but then you can refer to it again as just the injury to his hand. I knew okay. this was going to happen. Well, I was it's okay. I'm for defending this. you, Francis. Thank I, I you. like details. <laughs> I need drinks more beer. So, uh, but anyway, the kid's bleeding, and the kids don't want to get caught, so they basically run off. Um, or they're just he's freaked out, so he wants yeah, to get a band aid. That could One be of it too. Yeah. I didn't mean to man explain there. No, that's when okay. you cut your thumb that deep, you're gonna. Anyway, get then some a dog comes and pisses on the bench. Much like how Johnny pisses all over my commentary. (laughs) Um, Kind of, yeah. And then there's some random business guy with a suitcase just walking by. And then later on, um, the next scene is a very elderly couple. Um, The man's helping the woman to the bench, and they have a little box in their hand. It's it's the right hand, and he's holding it by a string, because that's going to be really (laughs) important later. Super important. (laughs) What's in the box is important, though. We're not there yet. You're jumping ahead. <laughs> What's in the box? <laughs> so they both a severed head. <laughs> they both sit on the bench, and you can see that I love you. And the guy opens up the box, and it appears to be a cupcake of some sort, some sort of pastry. And he takes the same knife that the little boy was holding in the, in the beginning scene, and he cuts the cupcake. I didn't take that as the same knife. I, I, you are saying what your opinion of that knife is, and I'm look telling at it. you, look at the drawing. It's I, the okay. same. I took. I, I did will, not I, take it as the same knife. Okay. I will differ in the sense that I don't think there's a time jump, and I don't think it's somehow this guy's related. I think it's just an unrelated yeah. incident. 
Oh, you thought that already? Yeah. Oh, I didn't. You thought it was a time jump? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. But it is. You guys know that, right? I don't think it is. No, because... Oh, the... my Oh my God. Okay, wait, stop. This is the story. Let me get into the story, and then I'll tell you why you guys are wrong. Okay, yeah, go for it. Okay, it's the boy and the girl, and the boy cuts his, his thumb with a knife, and then the dog pees, whatever. Then this elderly couple comes, and it's the same knife. Okay. Oh, I'm not... No, no, let me finish. <laughs> it's the same knife, and they're sitting right next to the I love you, and he cuts the pastry in half. And throughout this entire novel, the elderly couple comes which I'm thinking is yearly, every year, and they sit on the bench and he cuts the pastry in half and he shares it with her. And then the last time he comes, he sits on the bench, he brings a box and he sits by himself and he cuts the pastry in half and he eats his half and he leaves the other half there. And it becomes apparent that his partner has passed away. She is no longer there. Yeah. So the way that I take the story, and it could be just the way that I take it, this is the same elderly couple. It's the same... This couple is this are those kids, but older now. Like this, and this is their bench. The, the only problem with that theory is that at the very end, the thing that the scene that bookends everything is uh, a young couple. Well, a young man is going through what looks like a um, a uh, yard sale. Yard sale, mm-hmm. and he buys the bench and brings it home because the bench has been replaced by that sculptured bench that's right. to, to prevent homeless people from, from sleeping. sleeping on it. So. He owns the bench now. So the problem is is that the young couple now own the bench. And so if the elderly couple are still going to that park with the bench still there, there is a uh, time. A logic. A time, time logic. Time logic doesn't. thing. No, because I don't take the couple at the end as the kids in the beginning. They are because he's got the cut on his thumb. Yeah. It shows he, shows, she, he shows her the thumb with their little boy or girl. Like, oh, look, this is my thumb. Remember? Oh, I see it. Well, I didn't get that. So okay. Maybe if you knew it wasn't just a hand injury. <laughs> well, I liked my story better that if the Your, elderly couple Yours would have been cool. Died. That would have been neat too. And I will say, because like we way jumped ahead, I wasn't going to get there just yet. But I cried. Like when the little man came and he left the pastry. Right. And I'm like, there's no words. I start bawling i just started bawling i got choked up when that mm-hmm. scene came i was like oh i knew it was coming too oh I yeah knew you it, could but sense i was it. like god you could sense it damn it well the people that end up at the bench they just look like drug users that makes me sad that it's not the elderly <laughs> couple they, <laughs> they do they, they look don't. like she has a mullet they're and just like hipsters all, they're, they're french Euro, they're, they're european yeah. trash they're they, drug but, users no <laughs> i should have known because they they destroyed public property and then that's why <laughs> They can't even afford a real couch, just this old used park bench. So uh. since we're kind of jumping around, I'll say my next favorite story in okay. this book. And you guys can tell me how wrong I am, but I'm not on this one. I know I'm right. <laughs> so um, it is interesting because all the scenes are just different ways people use the bench. The dog pees on it. The dog, the dog uses it as shelter when it's raining. But there's this um, elderly homeless man who obviously uses it to sleep on quite a bit. And... This cop comes up to him and starts, like, yelling at him. And there's no words, again. It's just the facial expression, the anger. And so the homeless man gets up and he leaves. And you can see the cop as he leaves. The cop kind of feels defeated, like, kind of self-loathing. Like, he really didn't want to yell at the homeless man, but he had to because that's his job. And throughout this entire novel, that keeps happening. The the homeless guy's on the bench. The cop comes, writes him a citation. He tears up the citation. Um, But later on, the cop retires, and he brings the homeless man a fishing pole on the bench. Um, I didn't did take it that oh way. Oh my god! No, you guys. that was his gift. Yeah, that was I his took gift. it as that. That the was a cop, cop's gift. Cop got that gift from the his force. retirement apartment. That was yeah. his retirement thing. And then they start talking uh, about fishing, and then he hands it over to him as like, "You're gonna need this more than I do." Right. Well, he still gives and, it to him. It's well, a gift. Yeah, right. But he it, gives it to the homeless man. But it wasn't like he. Brought, I'm retiring, and, and here's, I bought you the gift. Now that I'm retired, I don't have to give you a ticket. I'm gonna give you a, a fishing pole. I I took it as. Um, now they, we're in the same boat almost. Well, I, like, I got a I got a fishing rod for my retirement party. I might not even know how to fish. Yeah. And so, but this guy's like, oh, I know how to fish. And he yeah. ties like the line and everything. And you guys then, got all that when there's no words. No. Yeah. I yeah. disagree. Okay, I still think. <laughs> no. But, I get that he got from the force, but he didn't even have to give it to him. Like, and no, it's not he, just random. Like, he wanted to give it to him. Well, I think he, once he sat down to him, right. next to him, like, he was overwhelmed by the compassion of, like, oh, th- even though I've been shitty to this guy numerous times, he still took the time to, like, show me how to tie a fly rod. 
And I think the other reason he felt uh, like he owed this guy something was at one point they hold their hands up and the cops like my he holds up like uh, like a medium length Mm -hmm. and then the homeless guy shows up holds up a bigger length Mm -hmm. and they're comparing each other's penis sizes. No, they're not. <laughs> the cops it like, is French, so I don't the know. The cops like, oh, I then I have to give you yeah my, my fishing, fishing rod, rod because you have a per, bigger per, uh, per French law. Yeah, per you French have a, law. Yeah, your dong. Though. I kind of, I, I kind of agree with <laughs> with Johnny there. But uh, no, I mean it is open up to interpretation. No matter what he he get he don't he be made patronizing. A, I'm not. I'm what I'm saying though is you're wrong, but you're still it's a good thought. No, but. Um, the fact that he felt some compassion for this homeless guy that he kept fucking with for however I, many years. Well, but he felt compassion in the very beginning for him, though. But I think for both, I think Johnny and you are could be both correct because that's the thing, right? It's a silent movie. You're yeah. to infer things from what you're seeing. And we fill in those blanks with our experience from other things we've read. Uh, and so one interpretation isn't necessarily... Uh, always wrong unless you're thinking that there's some weird time travel thing in the old couple or the young couple from the beginning. That's totally wrong. <laughs> but uh, that aside, um, I think it's. I think you both could be right in that sense. The one story I could not figure out was the three elderly women. Well, because just one ends up. Yeah, but they they were telling a story when you're first introduced to the three elderly women that sit on the bench. Excuse me. And they're like gesticulating and and like have these like. What what does that word even mean? Gesticulating. Moving their hands a lot. Okay, then just say that. <laughs> I actually know what that means, but if you're gonna use big words like that, it could throw off a listener if they don't know. Well, then they that's should, writing 101. Wow. Then they should go. Uh, don't pick, use big words. They should go get a dictionary and 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 stop read. listening to this yeah. and stop it. <laughs> they don't they have to look it up because they're listening on their phone, and then they could uh, pull up dictionary.com well going to so. the old ladies it seemed like they were trying to see who was still who still had it because it was each one was like look that guy's kind of flirting with me i don't know if that was i don't know and i don't know what the story like what they were trying to um share with each other i didn't pick up and then yeah and then eventually it's just down to the one elderly woman so i guess she killed the other two <laughs> <laughs> that's my interpretation of and she the visits story. the site of the murder every time, <laughs> she, like a true serial killer. <laughs> she buried him near the bench right. in that park. Right. Uh, and then there's the skater kid. Oh, that's kind of a useless story. Um, I hated him. Yeah, because why he just came by. And... Well, because he was wrecking the bench. I mean, it was only a wooden bench. So uh, his skating could have very well have wrecked. <laughs> The bench. And you so, sound like such an old man right now. And so I was happy when he actually got wrecked himself and had to use the bench properly as a bench because <laughs> he was all busted from skating so much. It's funny, though, that, you know, cities do this where they put in these installational benches that aren't like so the, the homeless man used it mm-hmm. for home, basically to sleep and rest. The kid used it as a, you know, a skating mm-hmm. uh, tool or whatever you want to call it. Um and then they – we're skipping way ahead here. The bench the bench gets replaced with this, like, modular uh, – Artsy. Artsy thing. But really, it's designed to keep people from being able to skateboard on it or sleep on it. Because it has a divider in the middle, so you can't lay down fully on it. And then that bar thing that comes out on All the All wavy. Ends. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we also left out the part where um, – with the homeless man and the police officer who's retired is a young guy comes up. And starts a young officer. Yeah, a young officer comes up and starts messing with the homeless man, and the cop, the retired cop who previously was the person messing with the homeless man, runs him off. He starts yelling at him. He like he points to his retirement thing and chases the kid off. Um, um I want to talk about the bench getting destroyed, but we oh, already yeah. talked about. Is that okay? I uh, know I I you know what I didn't do enough research on that so hopefully you did because I didn't... I can't I can't find any research on this. Okay. I couldn't on I, the book itself. Yeah, that was the hard part. So is I, it a fairly new book? No, he's written. So this author has written three books, which he's well renowned for. The Park Bench is one. Um, Moby Dick is another, which I don't. I didn't read it, but I'm guessing it's about Moby Dick. <laughs> so I didn't. I didn't get it. But the third one was um, Alone. 
Alone is just as thick, but there's words. Mm. But it's about an old man who lives in a, like, I want to say a lighthouse, but that's probably not right. Like, he lives in an isolated community, and the ship has to bring him provisions. And it actually looks like a really interesting book because it's it's about how this man became very isolated and why he's that way and why the people who bring him things don't actually help. But again, I haven't read that one yet. And I wanted to kind of read both as a comparison, hmm. but... Were they both black and white? Yeah, they're, they're all... They're all the style mm. do you want to talk about the art style because i just know it as black and white sure like, real quick there seems to be some sort of listener may be picking this up some sort of like machinery running near our, where we record and i apologize for that so just in case you can hear that it just started uh, i'm wood chipping bodies <laughs> um okay so the art yeah i i, I think we can because this movie or this movie this book kind of it moves quickly the story moves very, very quick. I think part of that's because there are, there's no, there's nothing to read. It's all visual storytelling. Um, so I think if we jump into some of the art, it, it, um, I don't think we're like messing with the, with the way we're doing this. Um, so I, I really enjoyed the art. It almost reminded me of, um, cause it's just black and white and it almost reminds me of like a lino cut. Um, where, or like a block print where you just gouge out the printing material and then you put it on there. Um, like, it, it just seems very artistic, like, beyond a um, comic book illustration is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, overall, uh, the book was interesting to me in the sense that, um, do you guys remember uh, The Red Balloon? Yes. The Red Balloon? Yes. Oh, the f- it's a French film, right? right. That, it reminded me a lot of this, one, because it's French, and two, it's just basically you're just watching it. And um, it, this very much, it's funny you, you said that, uh, you said this film, Johnny, and then you corrected yourself because I actually felt this was kind of like an art film in some ways. Uh, like a I, French new wave. Yeah, and you know, in many ways, uh, when things were happening, um, I was replacing the silence with certain sounds. Like I would hear the bicycle bell ringing and uh, I would hear like this mumbled French, like they would talk to each other and even like some, I don't know, some sort of uh, French pop song kind of playing in the background as if I was watching some sort of film. Uh, but it definitely, it's, it's interesting because I wasn't sure what to expect uh, with this kind of art. Uh, and and zero words, but uh, overall, I found it pretty effective. I guess I'm kind of jumping to the conclusion almost. Yeah, but um, I think I think we jumped to the yeah, conclusion. Yeah, we already did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of hard. I'm sad. Like I'm sad that it's not the old couple because I like I feel like ripped off now. <laughs> like I really do. I felt like it's like such a be- it's still a beautiful story. Yeah, well, it and that it, makes more sense about like why they were so excited at the end because I just figured some druggies <laughs> getting a bench and I'm like. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> but now I get to it. The old man. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So that actually makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, there's only one part in the book. I wasn't sure what his message was. I don't know if you guys remember, and I pulled up to it. You guys can see it. It's uh, someone has defaced the bench itself, and it says the stupidity is unending. I, yeah. I think that's the guy who plays guitar, and he's got kind of a fro. There's two. There's two characters that look similar. Yeah, that's a problem. And th- it's the guy with the mustache and the fro and at one point he seems more like a like a, a busker or he's just playing music and trying to right and not making any money uh but then there's the other part where he that same character looks like he just quit his job so i'm not oh wait are you talking about the businessman no oh. it, the, it's the guy with like the kind of bushy black mm-hmm. hair and he's got he's got almost got is that a, the guy who's trying to date all the women yes like he always has oh, flowers that guy. but yeah. he's never Manages to find yeah. anyone. No, he does at the end. At yeah, the end. and yeah. I, I like that the too. The lady who has cancer, you assume she has cancer because she, she's, or like right. her, yeah. her hair is slowly growing coming, back. Or like she just she, survived. Yeah, like she has a headscarf at first when right. you first meet her and then she starts getting hair. And she's almost surprised that she has hair. Yeah. So yeah, so this is the only bit of, I don't know what you call it, writing in Confusion, this, yeah. Where the bench has some graffiti and it says the stupidity is unending. Then the guy sits and has let's party shirt. And then so the sentence becomes the party is unending or yeah. And then mm. the guy has oh, I didn't a, pick that the up. newspaper and then uh, the party is 
tenacious, which is kind of never going away. And then that guy leaves, and then suddenly the park bench says the stupidity oh, is tenacious. Oh, I didn't even get that. I, oh, I, didn't, that I didn't either. Oh, entirely. <laughs> well, I, thought, I was trying to think. You're what? the smartest one today. <laughs> I was trying to think, well, what's his message there? Is this, or is it just mm. kind of like just deep thinking there? Yeah, or, or it's, will the dumbass little brown guy catch this? <laughs> uh, yeah, I felt bad for the guy who kept getting stood up because like every 20 or 30 pages, he'd be there with a bouquet of flowers and then, like, I guess he got he was ghosted. Yeah, Wait, basically. So is this guy the same as the guy at the end? Hmm. Oh shit! Is it like it, it looks? Sorry, my world has been blown. <laughs> like talking to you two today because I thought I had this whole story figured out, but now like we're it could be because he has the same five o'clock shadow and kind of the combed forward like, bangs. So in my defense, the guy right now wearing let's party shirt looks like a druggie so maybe he cleans up and maybe he's not a druggie maybe he's just a young guy in his 20s yeah, who sorry. maybe drank too much it's just a scruffy dude and then this is him later and what's funny too is when the park bench does get um mut- mut- mutilated uh-huh. or uh vandalized mm-hmm. so they start painting over the stupidity as an ending but they leave the i love you there like they never mm. like they they left that or if they painted over it and just stuck because it's a carving but it didn't look yeah. like he actually painted well over and that's a good it. point you we forgot to address too the, one of this other stories is the caretaker of the bench yeah. essentially and he's constantly sweeping around it painting it restoring it underneath it taking the snow off of it right exactly and so he's yeah he's essentially the the caretaker and he does some funny stuff that i think freaks out the one woman who's a, the one old lady because remember there's a a, a, um, a balloon and yeah, the t- little girl walks by, and the dad t- or the mom ties forget, it. Ties it, yeah. And then he has to tip it over to paint the underside, and so it looks like when he leaves, he leaves it that way, and it looks like the balloon. Oh, I didn't even catch that part. <laughs> that's, that's, I, that's why she got freaked. I thought she just got freaked out, like, "Oh, my bench is out of service." No, she got freaked out because she oh, thought the balloon was lifting up the bench. Ca- <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! <laughs> You're <laughs> on point with this book. Anyway, so she's like, her world is like blown blown by that kind of so stuff so then she turned around and killed her two friends <laughs> yeah, exactly but, she thought, well she thinks they're haunting she thinks uh the pennywise the clown is there <laughs> exactly. just to do his bidding i did uh, another st- <laughs> this is gonna be stupid but i thought it was hilarious when i went there's a lady who gets a letter and reads it and then you it jumps ahead later and she comes back and she's carrying a baby and i originally <laughs> This is so stupid. When she read the letter, I was like, oh, her and her baby have HIV. <laughs> what? Okay, that's, well. That's what the letter said was that they had Once HIV. again, you 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 do fill in what you want to fill in. <laughs> Johnny took it to a really weird, dark area. You guys turned your heads so fast. It was, it was worth saying that. That horrible joke. Oh, but um, I don't know. I I. It's inter- like, yeah, all this buried stuff that I didn't yeah. catch. I, I was just well, thinking. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that woman gets freaked out on a couple different occasions. The other time is when she sits down and another guy brings a lamp and then sits down next to her and reads. So it looks like he's like yeah, yeah, yeah. reading with a lamp. Like he's just some sort of weirdo. Right, because obviously there's no electricity. And so she leaves. And it turns out he, he just brought it because he wanted to he sell it. He was selling it, yeah. yeah so. Like meeting someone in the park right. from, after a Craigslist sale. But – uh. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that she kept getting – her perception of reality kept right. getting messed with. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> just like See? mine just did. So what happens when you don't have words? <laughs> <laughs> so kids don't read books without any words. <laughs> well, so I was just thinking as we're talking about this because I felt this way when I was reading it, um, not to jump into like recommend or not recommend, but I think this book, because – it's odd because there are no words and it is so thick. I really felt like, even when I was reading it, like you really read, and read this a few times to catch everything I felt like mm-hmm. because there is so much going on and you start to see, at least for me, I started to see the patterns and then I wanted to get to like what happens with those people. Mm-hmm. So like a lot of the detail that you talked about today with the bit, I missed, I missed some of those things. And I think it's easy to do to just overlook because – you're like, okay, it's just a bench, right? I wasn't even looking for like metaphor or hidden <laughs> stuff. I thought it was just a straightforward story about a life going on around a bench. Well, in some so cases, I just, yeah. I just went, I just 
was like, oh, okay, oh, okay, and just kept turning page after page. I didn't look for any dip, deeper meaning mm. on. And for sure, it there are some parts where it's just just like life. There's just some mundane things that happen to it. The um, person who's always exercising around you. Ow! Sorry. I'm sorry, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, uh, exercising around it and using it to stretch, there's no meaning there. They're just using it as a, a tool, essentially. And um, there, I'm sure there's a few others I can't think of. But at first, the businessman seems like that. He's just passing it every day. And then eventually, one day, however many years, he has this epiphany. You know what? I'm going to sit down and relax and not go to my job. And I'm sure we've all had that occasion where we're like, Fuck it. I and did. And he, and he takes off his shoes. His shoes. And then yeah. he feels so liberated. Yeah. And he like unbuttons his shirt. Yeah. yeah and and then I he, loved that scene. I actually yeah. was like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, I think we all. And then he basically dances on the, the park bench. And, and then, that's when that guy starts getting some money. Yeah. Well, then the, he. The busker. Right. He yeah. somehow he goes back to the park bench liberated, not wearing his suit anymore. And then he meets the busker and he starts dancing. And then the busker starts making money. Yeah. yeah. So that scene when the businessman like sits on the bench before it escalated, it was just him. It reminded me of Pretty Woman when Richard Gere's character, I don't know his name, he's just Richard Gere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he takes the day off with the prostitute and they go to the park. Like she does the copper squat and he's like, what's oh that? Oh my God, I haven't thought And like about they got like the so hot long. dog and, right, like, and he's right. like literally in his suit, like kind of like unbuttoned slightly and mm-hmm. disheveled and he's like laying against a tree and and, he, and he's like using a I don't, it's not a cell phone. No, he's yeah, using it's something, something and she keeps taking it out of his hand. Yeah, maybe maybe, maybe it was right. yeah, maybe beeper. What we can't, is a car phone just to a car? Yeah. It's something it's something time. very eighties or nineties <laughs> yeah. in that yeah. But that's what that did remind me of. But yeah, I agree. That scene really hit home, mainly because I mean, we've all been there where we just kinda we just pass through some areas, right? Getting to work. And to find basically it's sit and smell the roses right and to be able to finally just let go and let go of some of those responsibilities i mean just the joy in his face was amazing to see where he wasn't just looking down at the ground just like uh like he had been through most of the book he was finally able to liberate himself so yeah i mean i I thought that was a really touching scene for me okay so part of this book remind me of richard link letters and uh for the listener we just had to look all this up so Three minutes of looking up, just yeah, pass by in a second. Smart. Of uh, his uh, first movie, Slacker, where mm. it just comes, in, the movie that m- movie Slacker just follows a character for a few minutes, and then it moves on to they bump into somebody, and then it moves on to the next character. It, there, mm. there's no through story; it's just little vignettes with each character, and that's what this book reminded me of. There was like each little. S- almost like self-contained universe that just happened to Oh yeah, for sure there was a, there was the another bench. movie like that, right? Uh it starred Madonna, Four Rooms. Well, that <laughs> that had somewhat of a Oh well, yeah, I guess so. The the bellhop was the right. uh, the, old, the bench is the bellhop in this yeah, uh, movie. I never saw Slacker, so I don't know if it comes back full circle or not. No, it just uh, keeps it, oh, okay. it just keeps moving. Uh, like you would so it's Slackers, we would be talking and then you would leave. You'd go to the grocery store, and as you were shopping, someone would pass by, and the camera would now follow them and uh-huh. their story. So that's that's what this reminded me of a little bit. And also, like, the art in it kind of reminded me of uh, – God, my brain is shot. Can't even think. Um, who's the graffiti artist that's really famous for – Banksy. Banksy. It just it reminded me of Banksy for some mm-hmm. reason, uh, the art in this book. Yeah, it had that – what do they call it? That silhouette – whatever they call that black and white art where it's stencil kind of yeah yeah just it mm-hmm. uh, which i had said earlier when we were recording this the art i guess we're jumping into the art of the book um was very yeah it looked like a lithograph or not a lithograph i'm sorry but a a, a line um a lino print or a block print or it didn't it didn't look drawn there's mm-hmm. not such like an illustrated look to it for me well i mean you make a good point johnny i mean we have to look at the art more so than we normally have because that's, that's the only language, yeah. right? That's the only language conveyed to us. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's not a fault of the author. I mean, that's I think that's the key. If if the art sucked and there were no words <laughs> and you couldn't understand the emotion, 
uh, then I think it would be a jumbled mess. I will admit uh, there are times where I definitely got some characters confused because I wasn't sure because they kind of looked the same to me. Like bushy hair guy. Yeah, exactly. But uh, for the most part, um, I was able to discern the different characters and such. Obviously, some of them are more clear than others, like the uh, old couple. Uh Apparently, I got all the characters mixed up. It was not clear. Um, There's really just one character. They went through different lives. So something that drew me to this book. Yeah, because this was your pick. It was, it was my pick. And what drew me to this is, so we started recording this. Um, we started recording season two in the winter. And I was at the bookstore one day. And I was just, Barnes & Noble. Oh, I got to say something about Barnes & Noble. <laughs> I am so mad at Barnes and Noble. Oh no! But Barnes and Noble has a very wide selection of graphic novels, and sure. I had no idea. And um, so I was kind of looking through it, and I I saw the park bench, and I also saw Alone, and um, I started flipping through it, and I I was kind of mes- mesmerized there in the store. I was like, oh, and I was like, I would like to do this for the podcast. I was like, we can, there's no way we can make your uh, episode out of no words, but I kept thinking about it and thinking about it, and we kept reading other different types of books and styles and I was like I I kind of want to revisit this one because I really want to read it um but the reason why so when you read the review or the inside cover it talks about how this book is really about community and it just happens to be focused the bench is what brings the community together Mm. and I thought this was very interesting because I want to say roughly 10 years ago and this is a time you guys can correct me (laughs) like (laughs) I I invite it this time um I lived on N and 21st street and this is in Sacramento on N and 20th, so right before it turns into 21st on the corner, there's um, the N Street Cafe. And right next to that, or there's a house maybe, and then right next to that is an open lot. And what happened was, interestingly enough, it was just an open little lot. Like, it could hold a house, but there was no house there. Someone came, and they put a bench there. Hmm. And it's probably something that they brought, like, at Target or Walmart. Like, they obviously, like, assembled it themselves, and they put it there. And then a week later there was a few plants and some people started sitting on the bench like they would I'm guessing they got their coffee from in street and they were sitting there and I'm not making this up um, like a month later the bench was gone and they fenced that plot of land and the rumor through the town was whoever owned that lot didn't want riffraff and like hoodlums using that area and to this day I believe it is still fenced off I think it is mm-hmm. yeah and I used to live right around the corner from there too oh that's why I was looking that's why I was like I think Johnny was in that area so but it, there was people in, in that neighborhood I'm guessing they lived there. I don't think they like drove from Roseville to try to <laughs> right. that were trying to make something nice yeah. that were trying to make a little urban park for everybody who lived there because in that especially in that vicinity um, I think the closest park is what's the park on like P and 16th sorry I just hit that uh, like P. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they do the chalk it up. Yeah. Oh, so right. and there's like McKinley, but I, I thought that idea was so beautiful, and I never even thought, like, I never thought, you know, to like use the land or like why would you want a bench there? But then it got it got tore down by some greedy business guy who's or woman, I don't know, but it's still just fenced up, yeah. and it's mm-hmm. it's a waste of land. It could have been a beautiful thing. It's almost an eyesore to have the just it like is. weeds growing. Yeah, in it's a ugly, lot. and and so when I saw Park Bench, I I think that's what resonated with me too, because I was like, oh, maybe that's what those people or that person was trying to create ten mm. years ago was just this sense of community, this little spot of solitude within this busy urban area. Um, it's pretty close to the bus stop as well, so. Obviously, Riff Raff is going to be at the bus stop. I, that's not stereotyping. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that is. But it's, I mean, it, what I'm saying is like, there, if someone's going to use the bench to sleep on, there's other benches as well. Like, that wouldn't have been the only one. Sure. So, um, I am glad, though, that we read it. And I want to read it again, especially now. And I think I need to spend more time, like, looking at it. Yeah, it definitely need, welcomes a second read because. Dennis caught a bunch of stuff that neither of us caught. Yeah, and we all had very different interpretations. And also, so I'm a writer. He obviously wrote out the story before he started creating mm-hmm. it. And you have to be, um, as a writer, like, especially today especially with copywriting, you have to use as few words as possible. You have to catch attention. You have to get your point across super clear with less words less jargon and there's no words and it 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 takes a lot of talent to not use or i think it's even more challenging it's a lot more challenging and i think to 
you could just look at the size of it and be like, I don't, I'm not going to do it. It's no, whatever. It's, and it's black and white too. So there's even le- like, you can't there's even, no color. there's no color in it to express or like give a sense of what the emotion is for that scene or I don't know. And the it, cover is kind of deceiving because, uh, the, it shows the park bench with the red balloon. And I thought it was going to be one of those where they use a little bit of color to accent emotions. We've, oh. we've, we've, we've been there yeah. where the background's changed or there's one item or one person that's colorized. Oh, like in Ghost, Schindler's List, yeah. they do right. that. Yeah, right. and Ghost World was kind of like a grayish. Right. Some of the had tones to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But this one had none of that. So, uh, yeah, you're just relying on the artwork itself without any color, just black and white. Well, although they did do that negative, like when it was nighttime and the homeless guy was... Yeah, they flipped the negative space. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's a... I, I would recommend the book. It's different. It's certainly different than what the majority of the books we've read this season are like. Um, it's almost like the antithesis to the um, uh, Luther Strode books. Right. Because like, it, it, it's... It's not loud. It's not. Yeah, it's not loud at all. And and you, I mean, you, I read it very quickly, but it's a it's a much more subdued mm-hmm. read than the <laughs> Star. Well, is it, poor is Justin it, Jordan. We're sorry. Isn't that listening. amazing that you can know characters so well in a sense without ever them speaking? For instance, at the the last scene for that old lady we talked about who was freaked out by the balloon and had the two friends before. Uh, they had replaced the old bench and put the new one, and she clearly was not pleased with that. But that mm-hmm. was her spot. Yeah. So she brought her own little chair, despite the fact that <laughs> there was this bench there already, so that she could sit in her spot as usual, but in something she liked. And you could sense that kind of her her annoyance. Yeah. Uh, and such. And in, in the final um, uh, parts of the book where um, we discover that the – the young couple are actually the kids from the beginning and kind of that, that joy that the, the husband had showing the wife um, uh, the I love you. And I assume they went off to abandon their child and make love. <laughs> Here, sit on the bench, kid. <laughs> exactly. For the, for the next seven to ten minutes. <laughs> or do drugs, as, as Francis <laughs> seems to think they would do. They look like druggies. Let's get high. <laughs> I remember when we were young. <laughs> That's hilarious. I did not interpret them as druggies. I just thought they were like hippie, neo hippie kind of. It's true. They did look unkempt. Now that I think about it, like it was five day. And if he's the same guy who's the let's party. It's like the party ended a while. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why he was out partying because him and the girl that he's known and loved since childhood. Mm-hmm. Innocent love into adult love. Mm-hmm. They broke up for a little while there because he was partying too mm-hmm. much. He probably gave that woman with the baby one and <laughs> impregnated her and then gave her HIV. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, and I, I like the little, there was a little break where um, there was a guy you didn't see before and you never saw him again. I think it was, um, he looked next to him and there was a young guy eating McDonald's. And for whatever oh. reason, the young guy left and this fatter dude who kind of looked like that guy but fatter sat down put on the guy's hat and get his i know he started eating his food and then the guy looks over and assumes that the guy just transformed so it's a little bit of absurdist humor there but i i don't know i dug it i dug it yeah it was different yeah i know i guess we're doing conclusions uh i really liked it i it, it was like watching a silent movie or an artsy kind of film, but not in a bad way. I felt, uh, much like Francis said, it's amazing what the author was able to convey, given that there were zero words. Um, and so, yeah, I would highly recommend it. Yeah, it's an impressive feat of storytelling and art. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Francis, you hated it, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is one of the few books that we've read where I immediately want to go out and buy all the other things that he's written. Oh yeah, yeah. Because like, because I did like it so much, and I am, I really do want to read alone, especially because that does have words. So I want to see if um, he's as strong with his language. Public, yeah, his or, publisher was like, maybe words aren't your thing. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I really didn't think. I guess I was expecting more what you were saying about with the movie, just like snippets, but to see this whole community and to see their stories. Um, 
not the way I thought they would play out. Like, <laughs> I mean, but it still has a happy ending. Like yeah. the couple still does get the bench, which is good. Uh, but I just think there's so many parks here in Sacramento that have played such a significant role in my life. And I, I guess I just take that for granted, like what, what the park has. And like when you're a little kid and your parents are like, hey, let's go to the park. I get like super excited. Um, back in the day, I don't know what kids get excited about anymore. <laughs> but I, I felt like this book did a really good job of capturing that. And I maybe I took this like way too deep. Like, I don't know. Maybe no, I'm just, so. I'm hormonal this week. But um, the things you take for granted or the things you overlook, it's just something as simple as a bench and like what that really means, what that really does. You know, something like what, what a park does for a community, what the role that that plays. And I just thought they did a really good job he did a really great job capturing all that. And I'm really curious because I, cu- I couldn't find anything in English about him. Um, I wonder how much time it took him start to finish to do this because, yeah. mm-hmm. and then some of the scenes too, I started wondering like with the dogs peeing on the bench, I'm like, did he just copy and paste? Like, I mean, some, and like, like the rain stuff, I'm like, is there a way that he did this where like he programmed mm. it so he could use? I seriously doubt it. I, you I think it's all hand? I, I think he went through the effort of, of each person because it didn't Each look digital. Pan- well, no, and yeah, it didn't look digital. And then two, I don't think he would cut corners. Like there's so much yeah. effort and love put into this book. I don't think he would cut a corner like that. It just, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's a it's a definitely a work of art, and uh, you should definitely pick it up and read it. And what I like too is the end part where it addresses um, how um, park benches are changing. I didn't realize if this was a thing in Europe at all, but the anti homeless It's a thing here, too. Well, it's a big... I mean, that's Seattle. That that was directly... Looked like Seattle to me, which is basically something that looks artsy, but is actually, in fact, anti-human. Um, so to, for him to address that is, is interesting because it changes the nature. You know, the government thinks that's what people want. They get some artsy guy to manufacture something that does what they want it to do well and it's also the duplicitousness mm. of did i just put too many <laughs> syllables in that word but the duplicitousness <laughs> i can't even say the word of of oh hey look we're putting this beautiful park bench in for all of you that's a work of art yeah but it's so that you guys will enjoy the park more so that homeless people don't have a place to but in the end the, the old lady didn't like it yeah um you know the the skateboarder can't go and enjoy it so you're actually cutting out members of the community yeah because of that and yeah i you know, you, you don't have a guy sleeping on it, but he's also a member of the community. And so you're just, yeah. you're just basically chasing them out is what you're doing is you're chasing them out without a solution. You know, so. Damn, we went deep on this one. <laughs> well, Francis Preziosi, where can people follow you? On Instagram <laughs> at Words and Waffles. Uh, you can follow uh, the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at GN Explorers Club as well as email us if you have any questions or comments, gnexplorersclub at gmail.com. <laughs> it always cracks me up how much GN Explorers we yeah. have and <laughs> pretty much every, That's branding, folks. It yeah. is solid, repetitious branding. We know that's, I, you know, no fault of the authors, but when we try to tag authors and comics... Sometimes, yeah. Uh, it's really difficult because their Twitter handle and their Instagram handle is totally different as well as their Facebook page. Or it has like nothing to do with what their name or anything. Right. You're like, how the hell did I find this? Yeah. How do I find this person? And then so, you and so when we try to when, yeah, so when we try to tag and cross post, I have to edit and change it for each social media platform. So uh, that is a lot of uh, Gene Explorers Club, but still. Justin Jordan makes it really easy for us to tag him and things. We love you, Justin Jordan. I, yeah, did, if you're listening to this one. <laughs> did, did we mention him in every episode? I think so. We might. I think we should tag him. <laughs> yeah, he's you're, our, you're our favorite, Justin. <laughs> he really is. We we have a, a growing love and respect mm-hmm. for him. So um, I think that's it. Where can people find you? Oh, that's right. Uh, Twitter, Serious Talk Twit. And I just changed my Instagram and I remember it. Serious Talk Seriously. You can follow the Instagram there. And then, oops. Um, and no more Ewok? It. I got rid of the Ewok. Um, but uh, that's it. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next Bye. week, I think. Yeah, we got one more? Yeah, I yeah so. one more. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is our postscript. And then we're we're recording this after we had stopped recording. And Francis brought up a really good point of I had said, make sure you, you, know, you go out and read this book. And that 
you had said, do you actually read this book? Because there's no printed word. It's right. all visual. So, But your eyes know to go left to right and to follow yeah. it. But then, and then just like, no, no, you read it like a book. And I was like, honestly, like you could flip in the middle and you're not lost. You know exactly what's happening because of the pictures. Whereas with a novel, if you flipped a, the, an actual novel in the middle, you you would be lost. So I don't know what that term is. Um, you You read it, but you're not reading anything, which is very odd it's, yeah it's not one or the other but are so. you I, mean, I would argue you are reading you're reading the pictures because you're extracting story from looking at it and yeah. maybe that goes back to when you said uh the movie because that's to yeah. you that's how you're interpreting this yeah, you're, you're, you're interpreting the visuals like a silent movie mm-hmm. it's because you're not your reading yeah. yeah so all right well thanks for listening uh and if you stuck around for this postscript even better <laughs> If you want to plan ahead for next week's episode, we're going to read Through the Woods by Emily Carroll.